I'm delighted to be joined uh, by Matthew Macklin and Jamie Moore. Well, it's been 10 years since your epic encounter. Um, well, it was a good night for one of you, not so good for the other, but it was one of the best British title fights that we've seen in um, well, the last 15 years. And, you know, we'll start with you, Matthew. Even though you were not on the right side of that, you must have been sort of proud to be involved in that fight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, it wasn't a great night for me. I, you know, building up to the fight, I was so confident. I trained so hard. I really, you know, lived. I was, you know, had all the... Your, your projections and you're mapping out your route after where it takes you and you could get him and I'll win that and it would look good. You know, this is what's going on in your head for weeks and weeks to in the build up and then you're focused on the fight and I'm focused on Jamie who was my opponent at the time and, and the tactics and game plan and all that sort of thing. But um so yeah so, so to lose I was devastated but um I think I mean, even when I came around in the hospital Jamie was there, Ricky Hatton was there, Billy Graham, my dad, everyone Kerry Case, there's a lot of people there and it, it it quickly came. I quickly realised that it, it, it. I mean, I couldn't really remember at that point, but I could. I, I could tell by the way everyone was talking that it had been an epic battle. And uh, when I started out watching boxing and you know the Rocky movies and all all the you know Ben Eubank fights, there was. Uh, I always wanted to be involved in those type of fights. I didn't want to be someone that fiddled my way to winning titles. I wanted to be. You know, I wanted the glory. I wanted to be. I wanted the blood and guts and the the glory of it. I wanted to be involved in those fights of the year type fights, the Yagati Ward battles and uh, so yeah I mean I was devastated on, on, on the night, I wouldn't say I was devastated on the night, I was, I was, I was stretching in an ambulance to the hospital and uh, when I came around I was just, you know, everyone was there and everyone was talking about what a great fight it was and everything so it didn't really dawn on me. I think the days and weeks that followed, it was a devastating loss for me because it was like where do I go from here and everyone was kind of speaking as if, you know, he'll never be the same after a fight like that, after a loss like that. And um, but if anything, I think it was possibly the making of me, and uh, I think my my, um, my stature certainly grew from it. And even though I lost, I think, it, and, and it, probably like a couple of other of my defeats, I think my stock rose in defeat. And uh, actually, and then you know, looking back now, I think people were saying at the time, no one really lost that night. You know, boxing one, and I think that is true. I, all right, well, I did, I did lose the fight, but you know, there's, there's much more. There's bigger things in, in life and there's bigger things in boxing. And I think in ways it was the making of me. And I think, uh, I think, it, I think in a lot of ways that, that, that fight probably um, signified me or, you know, tip, you know it, probably, it was probably typical of me, you know, kind of never say die, really go for it. You know, blood and guts, too honest at times, giving it everything. And uh, that's probably the kind of fight I was. And I look back now, and I don't think there's a week that goes by on Twitter where people don't say, I've just watched, got back from work, or just watched this son, or just... So, you know, it was, um, you know, it was, it was, I lost the fight, but I was proud of the, uh, the guts that I showed in it. And, uh, and listen, I went on, a, I was friendly with Jamie before, and I trained him after that. So, listen, there was a much bigger story to that uh, fight than just, just the fight itself. We'll come on to that in a second. Jamie, um, I remember at the time, it, it was a fight that everyone wanted to see and everyone knew this was going to be a, a good fight. I didn't think they'd realise it, how good the fight would turn out, obviously, for you. But just as an encounter, it sort of exceeded what anyone would have thought that, you know, you two would have done in the ring. Everyone knew it was going to be a good fight, but it was, it was epic, like I said. Yeah, everyone was surprised except me because uh, th there is an interview somewhere online, somewhere, where I say... Listen, let me tell you now, this will be fight of the year, 100%. I know Matt inside out, I've known, I've been down there seeing him training. I knew how good he was, and that was the thing. And everyone thought, you know, in a day and age where a lot of people avoid each other, that was one of the stages. And, and to be fair, people have done that before. We, we boxed each other as well. And I was definitely cut from the sort of cloth where you don't avoid people, especially when it's a challenge. And, uh, and I'd gone past the stage where I was going to win the British title. Oh, sorry, I'd won the British title outright. I didn't really need to keep hold of it. And I felt like I was being pushed into giving it up by, by, by being scaremongered into it. And I was like, no, nah, that ain't happening. I'm just going to have to fight him. And I was, he was half pride and he was half... He was a, with, a, with a bit of um, the sort of attitude where I was thinking, have I done the right thing here? Because I just knew, I just knew the sort of fight it was going to be. I knew how big... I, I was usually the stronger fighter. And I used to watch him thinking, he'll be an hand for him. And, uh, and, and as, as Matt just said there, I think I was just going to make that point myself. Sometimes there's fights where there isn't a loser, you know, even though there is... And, and I would sort of experienced it myself with Ryan Rhodes where it, I got fight there with that one as well and I lost the fight. Uh, and, and obviously th there's different reasons for that. But I think I watched the thing the other day about connecting the dot backwards and at the time Matt would, would have been gutted about losing. But when you look back and you connect them backwards, 
it, it wouldn't have moved up to middleweight if it had, if it had won that fight. It had stayed at light middleweight, and that probably w would have been his undoing in the end because he was too big. So there's always a different reason for everything, and and it was just funny you said that when I looked on the um, on the picture they put on the poster of advertising this night, and obviously we're head to head with the referee. And I look massive compared to you. Yeah. And you were like, Jamie was a big like middleweight yeah, at the time. Yeah. Like, you were like weighing in 11 stone, bang on, couldn't wait to get a drink. And I'm looking at you on the night, and, yeah, and I, I remember looking across at him thinking, what the, how big is he? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was a, it was just one of the things, and, and that was the start of me having a few nightmares in my head, thinking, how am I going to get through this? But something, I've, we've had this conversation, you just don't know how you're going to get through things like that. He said, like a natural instinct what kicks in and you just do it. Just and, keep uh, going, we'll just, yeah, just keep going. Because I, I remember, just key points in the fight, but I remember, I really remember sitting back at the end of the third round and I remember thinking, God, I've never been this tired ever. Like even when I've done the 15 rounds on the body yeah, belt before yeah. where I really basically emptied the tank. And, I'd, and I nearly spewed it at the end of the sixth round. I was nearly sick. Yeah, and I was yeah. like to Oliver, I can't keep doing this. And he was like, get it all back, get out there. And, I think you need a good corner. He's, he's something in a fight like that, a good corner. You need a good corner. And we think we both had that because Billy Graham, an exceptional trainer, and Oliver was just cut, you know, right, right down my street. I do want to talk about that 10th round. Um, just from your point of view, I think, you know, everyone was sort of watching it and just and knew your reluctant celebrations after, after the, the fight, you know, sort of told the story really about you and how you are as a person. Uh, main emphasis was to make sure that Matthew was okay. Yeah, I'm, no, nobody wants uh, to see somebody hurt in boxing. Certainly not the person who you've just boxed. And, and and we wasn't friends as in friends like we are now before the fight, but we knew each other. And, uh, you know, we had the same sort of circle of friends in Manchester. So it was a tough one for me. It, it's sort of bittersweet. I've won the fight, but how can I celebrate when potentially something really bad's happened? So, uh, so it was just... The, the, the best sight for me was going to the hospital and, and him smiling at me and going, what the have we just done? Do you know what I mean? So it was um, it was one of those moments where you look back and, 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 you know, it's all right saying, like, rocky sort of fights and stuff, and, and, and it's difficult to speak about yourself in that way, but when I look back at it, I think to myself, how did we do that? And then that was one of those moments where it, you could easily put it into a film and, and, and watch it and think, wow... That sort of that was made for that sort of moment, you know what I mean? It was uh, it was magical. Yeah. What do you remember about him, Matt? If you remember a lot of it at all, <laughs> the fight or no, the, that final sort of the final round after that happened, the, all the attention in the ring, obviously, uh, to make sure you was all right. I don't, I don't remember the, atten the attention in the ring. I just remember coming out. I remember the com coming back to the stall at the end of the ninth, and I just had nothing left. But. I'd had nothing left from about the third or fourth, yeah. to be honest. And I was just summoning it up from somewhere, and um, I was, I was, I was, I wasn't going to stop until I collapsed anyway. And I remember, I don't know, we were 30 seconds or a minute or whatever into the tenth round, and I kind of got pushed to the floor. We come to a bit of a clinch, yeah, and I got yeah. pushed to the floor, and I didn't have anything left. I really I just had nothing left. But I got up. I sort of knew. That and that's was the, the last point. Sort of thing I, I sort of knew because I turned him all the way through the fight. And that was the first time that you'd gone on the floor, just because you fatigue. Right. And I thought, I remember thinking, oh, he's, near, he's nearly done now, yeah. I think, um, like I said, <laughs> um, I mean, years after, it's crazy to think that, you know, um, you used to be involved in that trainer fighter situation. And, uh, you know, I know uh, to think of your fight back years, but you, you two have become really good friends. Obviously, that's what led into that. Yeah, well, like I said, we were friendly before the fight, not friends as in exchanging numbers, but after any of the, you know, you bump into each other at the weigh-in of a Ricky Hatton fight or a press conference or or whatever, something like that, and you'd always, like, we'd always stop and have a 10-minute, 15-minute chat and always very friendly and respectful. And then, obviously, Jamie was British champion. I was kind of, you know, I was kind of probably the hot prospect in any yeah, weight division yeah, in the yeah. UK at the time, like in any weight division, so... He must have. Really, he was looking to push on, really. Jamie was European level then. That, I mean, that fight was European. Both of us probably would have beaten anyone else in Europe at that time, and he was looking to push on, and rightly so. But I was sort of had had, had the last to Andrew Facey. I changed the uh, promoters a little bit. I'd had my injuries, and I was. I really felt like I was behind where I should be, and uh, I was just. You know, I got made mandatory for Jamie by the British Boxing Board of Control, and we thought. Um, I thought, right, I wonder what's going to happen here because it didn't make sense for Jamie to fight me. Like, it didn't, you know, like, like I said, most fighters talk boxing is business, but I think back then it was, we're probably a little bit throwbackish, both of us. Uh, he definitely would have felt that 
whether it was Billy or Brian or me kind of bullying him out of like vacating and I think he thought nah I'm too proud for that I'm not, doing, I'm not having that and from my point of view I didn't want to fight Jamie because I knew him and I also you know I knew it was a tough fight but there was a part of me that wanted to beat the champion you know I didn't want to win a vacant battle I wanted to be the man who beat the man and he you know he was the most probably exciting fighter in Britain at the time and I was certainly the most exciting prospect coming through and it was a fight that I think anyone was thinking god this is going to be a great fight everyone that's why it was so hyped it was so uh, the tickets, that, I couldn't get tickets. That was part of the appeal to me as well because I knew that I shouldn't really have been boxing at that level, I should be moving on. But I also did feel like I was being pressured into it and I thought, you know what, this would be a great fight. And as Matt said, I, I was in the game to be involved in good mm -hmm. fights. So, And I knew that win or lose, it was going to be a good fight. And I'd, I'd been involved in fight of the year once already. So I thought, oh, imagine being in fight of the year twice. So it, it did have that appeal to me and I'm just glad that before you turn, before I turn professional, I'm sure Matt's the same. You always think to yourself, if I can be remembered in fights like my heroes or my mm. peers have, have been before me, then I'll be happy to retire, walk away like that. And, and we've done that. And it's as Matt said, there's not a week goes by where people don't talk about it on social media. And it, you can't, I can't be any prouder of it. You know what I mean? All right, well, listen, uh, Matthew, Jamie, thank you very much for talking to us. And like I said, we're here in Birmingham, uh, an event put on by. Nathan Rooney to obviously celebrate sort of 10 years on from that. So just one question, if you used to have a drink later and you want to relive them moments again, make sure you get me with the camera. <laughs> I'm disabled now. <laughs> oh, I'm retired in, in every sense of the word, drinking and boxing. <laughs> All right, technical draw it is then. Jamie, Matthew, thanks for talking to us.